Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stone Phase Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here watching some Phase Zero. Thanks again to Sevda Q for a sponsor of this episode. If you want to sponsor episodes like this, just go ahead and check out the Patreon and become one of our top members. Uh, but we have some comments here today, so let's see what people got to say. And of course, we got Sevda Q up first, uh, from our Patreon, naturally, uh, for the episode A Night of Schemes. They say, based on my understanding, hope these explain what if servant dead and so on. <clears throat> Gods diminished in the modern world of fate, along with the fall of the God Age, due to certain events, gods are getting weakened and then rise of the human race. True ether in the atmosphere and mystery is fading gradually because of humans pursuing in logic and numerizing, so God can't uh, possess physical existence anymore like ancient time. And human lose access to true ether and magic. Human mages can only perform a magecraft by spending mana produced within their body. Due to the maximum mana capacity of a single body is limited, many mages tend to explore different kinds of magecraft to store excess of mana, like gems and worms. Instead, gods and mysteries still somehow exist in the form of nature, religion, urban legends, concepts, or something far larger in scale, which is outside of modern human perception. But in lore, those imaginary beings going to imaginary side of the world as mystery fading away, it is unrelated here, so don't worry about it. Right, thing to pull out of that one, I feel like, other than the fact that there was a god age, is mm -hmm. the, the worms thing. Now we know the purpose of the worms. I kind of figured that was always a bit of the purpose, it makes them imagine aside from just controlling our They never character. said it. They never said it. <laughs> so now, implicitly, Sevda is telling us that makes him a stronger magic user. Yeah, yeah. Uh, simply put, now in the human age, God's existence in the material world depends on the faith and beliefs from inter intellectual beings like humans, just like our reality world appear to be. Heroic spirits, too, they have their basic blueprint based on their legends in various parallel worlds. But when they are in contract with the throne of heroes, their form and concept can be granted some power up or alteration based on the highest possible imagination or ideals of collective unconscious of humanity. All right, magic is a thing we all decide together. Fair enough. So, at least that's a at least that's a basis. It's American Gods. <laughs> that that um, the novel and I guess the TV show. Right, right. Basic concept of American Gods. Uh -huh. Service in each Grail War is the product of human magecraft by getting the details of heroic spirits from the throne and insert them into a mana vessel. But the volume of their vessel is too small to contain all the information of heroic spirits, so only part of their soul and legend can be extracted, hence narrowed down to different specializations in classes or different period of their age. Also, they are not the same complete soul as the original being, but are a newborn person with given partial of the original soul and vessel, although they usually still behaving to the same degree. Those servants with less knowledge of someone will be unable to even realize or differentiate of themselves, except for Saber Artoria. She is probably the same soul and alive, but it is complicated and needs a whole Garden of Avalon, a novel of Artoria's legend to explain it. When a servant vessel is destroyed, their soul goes to a little grail first due to the designed ritual process of the Holy Grail War, but will ultimately return to the outer world, memories and events recorded and put uh, on their personal bookshelf, but usually they are fresh again in their other summon unless the memories are so meaningful for their own self or have the necessary to remember it. I think part of that covers the conversation that Gilgamesh had last episode when he was drinking wine and I was talking about how he's pointing out that there's different worlds. Also, mm -hmm. I think they're also referring to Garden of Avalon. Isn't that where King Arthur goes with... I can't remember who he winds up with. For yeah, all I eternity. Yeah, literal place he ends up going. Yeah, yeah. for basically he becomes immortal and lives forever, but can't leave. I, I guess given that context and that there's a novel to explain why our Artoria here is technically a fully sentient and realized soul that just keeps coming back. Okay, yeah, that checks out. That's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, if the Arthurian legend is true and the Garden of Avalon exists, or what, I think it's called something else, and the one that I'm, I know it by, uh, if that still exists, that means King Arthur or King Arthuria, <laughs> Queen Arthuria, whatever you would say, it's is still, still alive out there, yeah. which means that it's just a part of their soul that keeps getting pulled away. Yeah, yeah, that's actually. That's just actually funnier, honestly. But uh, 
I like the idea, of course, that if you have a part or representation of a person and something really important to their sense of self happens, it just becomes part of their new legend. It's like, okay, yeah, no, that checks out. If it's with the whole uh, collective unconscious, this understanding of what the hero is kind of deal. Uh, continuing the comment, Throne of Heroes seems like a joint defense mechanism of a planet and a symbol of hope and inspiration for her offspring. Gaia, or the Will of Earth, can summon servants too and capable to provide a much more larger and powerful vessel for the chosen heroic spirit, aka the Grand Servant, if the threat is out of control. Since she is providing the surface environment for every primate via a different era, so she also has the right to use the throne if she wanted to. Other than that, planet can also extend her senses via species like fairies, and Fate Gaia is relatively inactive compared to other Type Moon series like Tsukihime. Mages in Tsukihime can't even access to the throne. Usually, throne services for summoning magecraft are denied when Gaia is relatively upset with human. Uh, at most lower spirits outside of the throne, maybe, their influence are getting weak, so weak that in the story, they are only in conflict because of the church and vampires, mostly. That one feels like a spoiler. That's a whole lot to take in, honestly. I mean, because Guy isn't even presented in Fate Zero, so I mean, that feels like a spoiler. The the Earth is also fake and only exists because of the imagination of the things on top of it. Well, no, the will, <laughs> the will of the planet is fake. The right, planet right. is real. Mm hmm. Ah, and of course, continuing. God-level spirits, and usually demigod, can be registered into the throne of heroes, but still depends on their will. If they have unfinished business with the current world, plus lose their capability to manifest on their own, they most probably would sign up for it. But for a god, they usually don't easily get permission to use their image. Even if some god did, very little summon can fully draw out all the information of a god, even a summon performed by the planet itself. Um... If there are ever be summoned, they usually would have to be further narrowed down or manifest by inhabiting other beings which have high capabilities and similarities. Plus, they usually have no reason and desire to interfere much with the human world. Also explains why those servants who answer the summon are surely have some reason to pursue the grail. Sure, you know, the whole ghost thing. Patrick Swayze ghost, specifically. Well, I also like how you disgendered a gendered term that was given. Uh, when I think planet, I usually go to it. So that, that's Guy is typically presented as a female form. I am also trying to do my best to like sight read some of this, which isn't isn't perfectly connected together. So I mean, I typo I typo my own fucking notes, so I read it the same way that you're reading this now, just looking word to word. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, all, all of the servants have indicated that they would like to use the grail too, so I guess, like, if we're pulling together the souls of people who are also empowered by the human unconsciousness and who are maybe gods or to some degree, and they want stuff, they could send part of themselves to pursue this. Th I think this is all checking out, but it's definitely a part of the show or universe we're we're not privy to yet right we're not on the realm of like here's how the gods are disagreeing and thus that's how it affects our grail war right well, we're past the age of gods remember that was covered in the first paragraph like right, i said right, we're right. acting on uh, patrick swayze ghost rules which well, is sure, unfinished business age, but they still are sentient things that exist apparently they just can't interact the only ghosts well. that remain are the ghosts of unfinished business yeah there you go <laughs> that's what i said patrick swayze ghost Ah, there we go. Nice big comment right there. But our next comment from Yump is a little bit shorter. Uh, there from the episode False Start saying, Servants don't actually need to be real, quote unquote. They can be animals or even objects if they have their marks, quote unquote, on history. Okay, so that opens up like a whole bunch of possibilities. I want the, I want the pistol that killed Hitler, you know? <laughs> That's my servant. Uh, it's all answer type. All right, Griff, always bringing up Hitler. Yeah, no, terrible, terrible. But you can have, like, the Lance of Longinus or other, like, cool historical things. You can yeah, have... any weapon from Sempho here, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but does this mean you can have entirely fake things? Like, if it was in an anime and enough people liked it, could you summon that as your heroic spirit? 
It depends on if it's based on people currently who believe in it or all the people across time who believe in it. Yeah, yeah. It um gets complicated, right? I I'm sure we'll find that out in the future. I'm sure someone will go ahead and uh poke that in the series. Our next comment is from Alex V9 from A Night of Schemes. Some clarifications, no spoilers. Number one. Regarding divinity, gods, and other myths, yes, gods and all other mythological creatures exist, and the vast majority of myths and legends are real history in fate. The reason why belief gives certain types of attributes, such as divinity, to certain beings or people is because the world is composed of two sentient consciousnesses. The collective conscious of humanity, Alaya, and the consciousness will of the planet itself, Gaia, not to be confused with the primordial Gaia of the Greek mythology, with the latter being the one that has the greatest authority. For example, Alaya can only grant a certain level of attributes when people believe in something about someone, such as the minimal divinity that Iskander possesses, but only Gaia can grant slash turn something or someone into a god, but this has only happened at the beginning of the world. And finally, while the pharaohs were believed to be gods, none of them have the status of gods, but they do have a high degree of divinity or are the descendants of some gods. If I am descended from a god, does that not make me a god myself? So this does mean we could get Yugi Moto, the hero. As opposed so, to no, Yugi no. Moto, the what? The, the local card game enthusiast. Isn't he that already? Well, he's no longer local. He went pro pretty early. Are you talking about Yukimoto, the kidnapper of young boys? <laughs> no, I'm talking Yukimoto, the guy who attached someone to a pendulum saw trap. Number two. The Holy Grail of uh, Fuyuki is not the same as the Christian Holy Grail of Myths. It is only that the name because it is the object that fulfills wishes miracles. And no, neither the Eisenburns nor any other family is a descendant of Jesus. Okay, that puts all that to rest. Thank you. We don't gotta worry about it no more. <laughs> uh, my only retort to that is, says you? Maybe, says you. <laughs> maybe they are and they don't know? Maybe a future <laughs> Fate series is gonna come out? Where some missionary from, you know, Europe comes to uh, Japan and they have children and they find out down the line that they are the descendants of these missionaries who are themselves descendants of Jesus. You you can be a descendant of God in this. There must be one somewhere, but I guess just not here today in this one. Otherwise, they would just be all over that. Be like, what do you think you're going to do to me? I'm the son of God. I mean, technically, <laughs> technically. We all could be, right? It's the uh, the whole who's descended from Genghis Khan thing. And when you find out if you go back far enough, we all have the same common ancestors because yeah, yeah. there's just too few people in history. <laughs> Eventually, yeah, yeah. Um, but it does have me thinking, of course, that if you get Jesus as your like heroic servant summon, like he does he do like a bla blast of like fish and bread at you, or, or does he like do something else? No, yeah, you, you never like? saw the uh, the fighting game that's all like religious figures. No, Jesus I on his cross and he just breaks the cross with his muscles. <laughs> I can't remember the there name of it, but it's a he, fighting he game. He throws the cross and says, "You carry it." Not just a fighting game that has like Muhammad, Jesus, Buddha, every religious figure in history, but it's like a, you know, it's like Street Fighter. It's a side right. fighting game. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. I gotta go find that later. Number three. The Arthurian legend remains the same in fate. Only Arthur's gender and Mordred's conception change a little bit. Yes, Mordred is the son of Arturia and her sister Morgan Le Fay. I explain it since uh, Arturia pretended to be a man who was expected of him to have a child, so Merlin, with his magecraft, gave her a male uh, member that would last until she conceived with Guinevere. Morgan took advantage of this moment to put her under a spell and extract her sperm, which she used to create Mordred. This this feels like fan fiction at this point. This is, this is the fans, right? <laughs> I can't wait till we reach that part of the anime. Oh, boy. Well, apparently it's only in novel form, so you don't gotta worry about it. I can't wait till we review Garden of Avalon. Well, I can see where all the fan fiction is gonna go from here. At least I know what to expect ahead well, of Well, you, you really gotta know that when something like this happens, 
that when Merlin creates a penis, they have to describe all the aspects of it. <laughs> so we're going to have you read that part specifically, Griff. No. Oh, uh, no, so that's that your can, job. So I can clip your... it for future audio stuff. Four, the relationship with Kanyeth and Sola Ui as spouses is like many other mage couples. The relationships are very aristocratic when they marry for convenience to obtain power and knowledge and not for love. And that tension between Sola Ui and Lancer is due to the fact that, as already said, every woman who sees Lancer's face will fall in love with him due to the curse of the mole. Hence the nickname Direbood of the Love Spot. The love mole. No, he says that during the, the fight. It's what identifies him and makes it so Atoria can know who he is. Oh, I I feel like that slipped over over my attention. Probably the mole like also right slipped here. my I think it's like right here on his face. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to pay attention to that next time. I like I didn't actually know this little little bit of mythology. This is cool. This is neat. <laughs> I guess if you have something quite so, um, what, what's the word? Uh, quite so eccentrically obvious, then yeah, you become way easier to like identify. Like he references it during the fight about how no woman can resist, and he's surprised to find out that she's a woman. Mm -hmm. And then she brings it up too, and that's when they figure out who each other is. Right, right. All right, number five. Paraphrasing and summarizing what Curiel was explained to Gilgamesh. Kiri, what an eye at the end. Sorry. You're, you're right. Kiri was explained to Gilgamesh. Uh, what the vast majority of mages want to reach is the root. The root, or also known as Akasha, is the paradoxical metaphysical plane of the origin of existence, where everything that exists begins and ends. Being able to reach the root, the mage, who normally uses magecraft, will be able to use true magic. The difference between magecraft and magic is the level and degree of what one can do. For example, in magecraft, one uses a little mana to conjure fire, something that can be done with a lighter science, but with true magic, only science from the future, thousands or hundreds of thousands of years in the future, can achieve. In some ways, true magic can manipulate an aspect of reality. Ah, for shame. You did not give an example. You're like, okay, Magecraft can do what a lighter can do today, but true mm -hmm. magic can only do... Well, I have no example because I'm not from the future. <laughs> you kind of <laughs> you kind of waffled on us there, buddy. Uh, yeah, What what's the extent of true magic? If it is, quote, it can manipulate an aspect of reality, I think it's fair to say you could basically just do whatever you want. You have the author powers at that point. I don't know. According to this statement, of uh, magic can reproduce something that science can do, which <laughs> seems to me to indicate magic is just a shortcut, right? That yeah, you can create a fire without needing a lighter. So, <laughs> assumedly, true magic can just do something more complicated. You know, than like the way that a T one thousand can't turn into a bomb. Yeah, yeah. All right then. So number six. Teleportation is not something that mages can do, nor can the servants, as it would be breaking the laws of physics. Hey, there we go, limitations of magecraft, like we're covering. When servants dematerialize, they are only intangible and invisible. Even so, they have to walk or run to get to a location. Okay, so Keep Batman disappears. Yeah. Keep it up, you have a good sense of analysis. Hey, thanks. Um... Man, that must be slightly infuriating to just say, like, I want to take a break, you go in tangible and visible, and then you still got to run after everybody. <laughs> well, you also have to sneak, because if they hear you, they know you're still there. I, I'm assuming that they are completely out of phase with everything, and there's no evidence of them being around. It says intangible and invisible. Assumption. It doesn't say silent. They become ghostly. It says you're uh, physically you're not there. You're intangible, right? Mm -hmm. You're invisible. So I guess that goes along with intangible too, really, if you think about it. How can you make the sound of your footsteps if you can't touch them? It didn't say feet. <laughs> if you cough, you breathe too hard. Anything. Uh, but let's see. So we at least have like a funny mystery there of whenever one of them disappears, we gotta ask. 
how are they keeping up? And that's just going to be the funny background noise forever for me now. <laughs> well, most of the time they run away, so yeah, yeah. not many people have tried fake teleporting. Yep. Uh, but that does still leave us with our mystery. How did that group survive the building exploding? Because they definitely will have to have it survived, right? Well, they got a Lancer there. Yeah. So, we're going to get a flashback at some point, because I want to know, how did you do it? If you can't teleport, somehow you got out of there in time with no trail visible to the assassin. What are we going to do? Well, I mean, he's still a mage, so assumedly he could do something. You know, like you said, magic skips the middle step. Maybe he created, you know, a zip line or something. Right. So, I think with all the comments out of the way, let's go briefly over what happened last time and see what we can remember here. Last time was a night of schemes where Isrivel and Saber are driving to the Iceburn Castle when they encounter Castor, who believes Saber is John the Ark. Uh, but Saber tells him that he is mistaken and drives him away. Returning to his lair, Castor is convinced that Jean has lost her memories. At this hotel, Kainet scolds Lancer for failing to kill Saber. Lancer is defended by Sola U Noabe Ri Sophia Ri. As, why is that name so long? Anyway, Kainet's fiance, who is uh, maintaining Lancer's existence by supplying him with manor and has fallen for him due to the beauty mark under his right eye. When the hotel's occupants are ordered to evacuate due to a possible arson, Kainith realizes that Saber's master has come for them. After making sure all civilians have been evacuated, Kiritsuki and Maya blow up the hotel using explosives. Maya is found by Kirie, who escapes thanks to Kiritsugi's smoke bomb. When the assassins inform Kirie, Rise, and Tokami, the caster, and Yurei have been kidnapping and sacrificing children, Rise is disgusted by their pointless murders and they're jeopardizing the war's secrecy. In a meeting between Archer and Kire, the former convinces the latter to spy on the other's masters and find out what drives them in order to discover his own desires. So yeah, big building exploding, and uh, the second part, the entire talk about the out of world outer world, what people desire, and of course, what drives uh, Kire to do anything. Because so far, he says he doesn't want anything, but he's in the war, so he clearly wants something. And everyone's just like, you gotta figure it out. Well, yeah, the other world thing, again, from the comments is what I was talking about before. Right, right. Well, no, I'm talking about the uh, overly depressed guy who joined to be a pawn of everybody else. He also has a goal and doesn't realize he has one. Well, no. Well, here. I've linked you to the board, Griff. Indicate to me who you're talking about. Overly depressed guy can really just fall under a lot of these headings. You know what? Fair. Fair on that. Where is our priest? Where is he? No, there's a sat. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Kyrie. Right here. So he is the depressed guy, gets roped into it, says he doesn't want anything, and then literally during that entire talk, Gilgamesh points at him and says, you must want something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Well, you also remember in the very first episode, a long time before this Grail War starts, he is standing there being talked to by these two, getting uh -huh. talked into doing the thing. So it's entirely possible he doesn't want anything, he's just doing it because these two made him. Right, right. So, still, we have at least, uh, you've collected them all together, these people all on their own little side here, which, you know, checks out so far. Uh, let's see, we have Waver, who is essentially on his own, and is, uh, at war with his teacher, Kayaneth, over there. Uh, nice little walk over there. Uh, we have the Saber crew right here. The entire family and all the assassins. We've got, of course, uh, the crazy family bug politics here with Berserker, Caria, and, of course, uh, this entire little mess. <laughs> I'm not well, sure how else to explain They didn't really, that haven't really been shown since the first episode, but, I mean, they were still in it, and it's like the motivation 
for my tail here, so. Right, they are, they are pure context is what they are. Uh, so let's see, and then of course we have like our last two little subgroups, which is of course our uh, teacher, Kaineth, and then of course uh, Ryunosuke, right? Yeah, Ryunosuke, uh, who is of course with Caster. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's all of them, because there's only seven of them, right? Yeah, that's what I said at the start. Yeah, I I'm just covering, like, like we didn't have any more surprises. I just needed to make sure there. All like right. I said, these yeah, boards no, are always helpful for remembering who people are and their mm -hmm. connections to stuff, because you not only see their names again, you see who they're attached to. So if you forgot who this guy was, it's like, oh, yeah, it's the guy who's commanding Gilgamesh, and then he's allied to this guy, who's this guy's son. You know, there are these two, the married couple that believes that this is their grandson, but because he's fucking with them. Though, though it's also unlikely that uh, Glenn and Martha are going to show up again. Who knows? Uh, still, I think, like, one of the uh, more fascinating things we were talking about, like, a few episodes ago was just the way that Saber, Ryder, and Lancer were all interacting together, the way they seem like they feel about each other. Where, well, on one hand, they are, of course, s fighting each other, but at the same time, seem like they would align together. I mean, Ryder has no connection to any of them, because all he says is, alright, whoever wins the next fight, I got. So it's not really a connection, it's not animosity, it's not really a knowledgeable connection, nor is it a friendship. True, but he did say that he would align with uh, Saber to make it even if these two uh, actually went through the order and paired up, and then these two groups would be fighting. And then they didn't. So it didn't right. matter at the end of the day. And plus, that doesn't seem like a declaration of friendship. That seems like a declaration of fairness, which is not really the same thing. I, I think there is still the potential there that we can end up drawing like some green lines between these characters. Maybe we could actually get an entire subgroup where it is like these characters, the assassins, and Waver all together. But that means that this somehow needs to be resolved. Waver and the teacher, uh, Kainu. That's why they have a red line between them. I don't mm -hmm. believe the possibility for friendship is a reason to draw a friendship line. <laughs> it needs to be proven in action. Which is why Lancer and Saber have the red line to die in them mm -hmm. together, because, you know, they are going to fight. That They have their knightly honor on it. Yeah. Otherwise, we have Saber connected to Caster, or rather Caster. That's why the, the arrows point towards Saber, mm -hmm. because he's infatuated with... Otherwise, right. also uh, Lancelot here, Berserker, really wants to go after Saber. That's why they're directly connected. Otherwise, it's only what Gilgamesh uh, had his fight with Lancelot. How dare you, you know, touch a god sort of thing. And so... then um, Gilgamesh, who actively killed one of the assassins. Right. So when it comes to, like, interleaking everybody... All of these characters link all the way back out to Saber, who is essentially a main character, I Again, would say. I disagree. In all sarcasm, they're a main character. I mean, I disagree that they all connect to Saber, because they don't. Gilgamesh doesn't connect to Saber. He was just in the room, basically. Right, uh, Gilgamesh being... doesn't. That's why he's not in the bubble here. Gilgamesh actually does not give a shit. Well, I'm just and saying... the assassins also likely do not give a shit or like relate to anyone. I'm saying the assassins were also in the room, so to speak. Ryder was in the room. He said mm -hmm. shit. It doesn't and Gilgamesh said shit. So you're including Ryder on the same basis that Gilgamesh should be included. And it's mm -hmm. also on the same basis that I'm saying they should not be included. I mm. these two oh. exchanged blows. These two exchanged blows. That is a that is a meaningful exchange. Um Ryder proposed a thing that got said, no, we don't want to do that. And then said, if you do this thing, I'll do this thing. And then that other thing didn't happen either. So Ryder's entire exchange was pointless at the end. Alliances were not formed. Uh, enmity was not formed neither. The only things that exchange anything, in my point of view, is blades or spears. 
that's fair, that's fair, but I'm just kind of watching the way their personal politics are evolving, and I'm seeing, like, some people could group up together, some people could not group up together, and kind of- Those are the I'm options. Expecting, yeah, no. What I'm expecting here is that maybe we get, like, this group here, and then we do it versus this group here. That's kind of what I'm feeling for here. If I were to put, like, heroics versus villains here or something, right? But, uh, I don't know. We, I don't know if that's the way it's gonna go. Probably not. We got only... This isn't actually the longest series here. We're already halfway through. If you want to make John Madden scribbles, I would say this guy by himself... Sorry, I don't do this as fast as you. Uh-huh. This guy by himself. Right, fair. Kilo Commission won't let anyone else interfere. And then... Ah, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna double back on that. These guys. Gilgamesh isn't gonna have any say what the assassins do. They're just gonna be backing him up whether he wants them or not. Because they're all mm -hmm. in that allied ship. Right, fair, fair. And then... Who the fuck knows? You know, right. as they've got knightly honor on their side, which will prevent them from doing things that would be beneficial to themselves. Ryder mm -hmm. is on his own because he wants to do everything. He's given his speech. They said no. That's it. Lancelot has this whole enmity towards uh, Saber for some reason. And he's a berserker, right? He's been modified to not have intelligent thoughts. And these two right. are going to fight each other till they're done. And I don't think they're going to let anybody interrupt that. So it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to Berserker there, I think that's a fun thing to talk about real quick, which is uh, we've been saying Lancelot or like assuming Lancelot. They said Lancelot. And we weren't sure like how could, what is that? They said Lancelot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, we weren't sure, like, how could Lancelot be this Berserker-type character, right? Episode 1, he gets modified before he gets summoned. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that modification, now that we understand it more from our explanations today, starts to make a lot more sense. You can have whatever version of Lancelot you want. You can have your fanfiction Lancelot Berserker. Here you go. <laughs> no, no, I mean, he gets modified to be stronger with less intelligence. Like, mm -hmm. they, they fuck with the summoning. They customized the stats. They hit the uh, yeah. custom profile option. They yeah. literally did that. That's that's what they they said that they were doing. Like right when before they summoned him, before we had any concept of what that might mean, or before we went over the stat cards and everything. Yeah, they they yeah. say that. Sorry, I went back and I rewatched the first episode again. So that's why I picked up on what the hell's going on because I okay, I needed to rewatch cool. everything again to be able to figure out exactly who everybody was and who they were tied to and. Of course, these people I forgot existed. <laughs> right, right. They're just going to be in the background there. They are the motivation here for Caria, and that's all that matters right now. Well, she's the motivation. But, you know, she has a mom. That's her. She had a sister before she got adopted. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, I would assume that if she shows up in future fate stuff, that she would be a, a powerful mage because she's already been forced to go through the, the worm thing. Right, right. And this guy we haven't seen since episode one either. Mm -hmm. The vampire. The guy who called himself a vampire, or I think he called him a vampire. And that we were like, ah, maybe that's just like a turn of phrase. But then everybody in the comments is like, and then vampires. And it's like, okay. Okay, maybe they are real, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think we've covered what happened, people's relationship, what we're expecting. I say let's go ahead and get into it and see what they do today. So before we go ahead and get on with that, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below if you that algorithm. On top of that, if you watch more episodes like this, uh, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can go ahead and follow us over on Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but no pressure. It's all sports challenge. It's a little bit extra. Click the link down below. Join the Discord. Tell us who do you think. No, no. Don't tell us who you think. Tell us who you want to win. Don't tell us who does win. Tell us who you want to win. Hundreds dead. Worst thing since 9-11. Which hasn't happened yet. We're in the Bill Clinton years. 
Uh, so in this recording, Griff, you've casually brought up both Hitler and 9-11. I don't know what the fuck you're on about today. H Hitler did 9-11. So that's well, how they survived, Griff? Yep, there's our answer. Big bubble metal that can also hypnotize people. Well, I mean, them. Sphere is a good movie. Have you ever seen that? I don't think so, no. I read the book first at a library once, then I watched the movie. They're pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's there are some big changes, but not major. I mean, like, uh, I always heard about the prequel, Circle. <laughs> Darn it, you're supposed to laugh at that. It's oh, fun. sorry, it wasn't funny. <laughs> I mean, Sphere is like, I don't know. It's, it's a really good book. So, it's like, like, it's so niche to talk about book club stuff here on the channel yeah, yeah. that I'm just not going to let you make fun of shit that's not made funnable. Also, Look. when the fact that you're throwing out horrible references left and right, like, I don't want to encourage you anymore. <laughs> That's okay, you don't have to encourage me. I'm going to do more of it anyway. Literally, you got a terrorist attack on a skyscraper, and your first reference is to pull out a 9-11 joke. So I don't, <laughs> I honestly don't know what's wrong with you today, Griff. Uh, everything. Anyway, you should probably just start the book club channel, honestly. Eh, I'll pass. <laughs> you want to watch a book club version of uh, anime reactions or whatnot, I would suggest uh, a therapist called Brady. I guess look him up on YouTube. He shifted over his content to that sort of thing, it looks like. Hmm. Hmm. ゼンテイ的ルール変更を設定する。you could just do that? I think it's more surprising that this guy is holding all the past stuff that got unused. Mm. Sorry, is everyone here? No. Oh, are they doing it through familiars? I suppose so. I mean, it doesn't hurt this guy. He's allied with this dude. Yeah. <laughs> Caster's master wouldn't have a familiar. That's obvious. And then... Yeah, I guess he's just there, so he doesn't need to have another one. So yeah, everyone knows. Subcaster. I keep forgetting that uh, the Lord guy that I keep referencing is Waver's teacher. Or formerly Waver's teacher. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. God, it's not that guy. Who's the other guy that used the command spell? And they're like, he did. It's like, oh, shit. Is he the guy? Oh, they're just planning to give him the advantage, of course. The two old people, remember? You said they'll never show up again. Oh, yep. He ordered stuff online. <laughs> that would have to be over the phone, given the era. Ah, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. He's been watching those, uh, infomercial channels. <laughs> he bought a t-shirt. War <laughs> tactics. <laughs> He's such a nerd, I love him. 
Did you get a shirt for Waver too? I mean, to be fair, I don't think his armor would have done him any good in actual combat, so. <laughs> To be fair, he's at least not so weird that he can't answer the door. Because he's a happy-go-lucky guy. Yeah. People are happy to beat him. And now he just looks normal, but immensely buff. <laughs> well, he's doing the saber thing, right? Now I can go walk around. Yeah. What's wrong with shorts? sports pants, he's fine. I mean, you're not asking where he got the money from in the first place? Obviously, they're just robbing the old couple. <laughs> Ah, now we have personal investment. Is Ryder gonna defeat Caster? And get pants? Just for pants. There we go, Sabre, like I mentioned. <laughs> Jealous, I love it. Oh, these two really are the best pair. We picked them, both independently. Exactly. Exactly. And this new, this is new area. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I like this level of pre-planning. やつの悪行は容認し難い。これ以上被害が広がる前にこちらから撃って出るべきです。あいり。この森の結界の術式はもう。いや、it's <laughs> キャスターを万全の体制で迎撃するためにもまずはランサーを倒すべきじゃないかしらそれには及ばない君はチノリを最大限に生かして聖馬を逃げ回らせ敵を攪乱してくれればいいキャスターと戦わせないのキャスターは
Uh, you know what? We just dropped her off at daycare. It's fine. By herself. I have already been cheating on you with the assistant, though. Can't forget that. This is definitely the most over-emotional he's been. This is good. Seihayu まあ、<笑> Keep my new maid wife's name out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Everybody load up. I dispute. Take you a sasso yo cacatemus. Oh, right, I was say, it's kids, what are you talking about? Who the fuck knew that Caster was the Pied Piper? Because there's no chance in hell anybody would be allying with this guy. I know I might be waiting here for a while, so I brought a snack. Still with pajamas, too. Jesus. Yikes. That's one hell of a thread and a good way to start the action for sure, though. <laughs> I mean, they were like, will you saber as bait? And he's like, fuck that. I brought my own bait. But I left a white line on him because it didn't indicate that he wanted to kill her. So I don't know. Well, probably not. Also, apparently he's a really good attack. その子を離せ。けど。ジャンヌ、あなたがそんなにもこの子の救命を望むなら。さあ、ぼや、お喜びなさい。経験なる神の使いが君を助けてくれるそうだ。ああ。Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Literally the same thing. He, same thing he did to the first kid when he first appeared, too, remember? Well then. Because Cthul Cthulhu exists for some reason in this world. Oh, 
貴様と聖杯を競おうとは思わない Well, then, that's actually a convenient power to have. Or remember, the sword gives like a air pressure sort of thing. Mm. They certainly got area control down. Oh, absolutely. All right, also, there we go. They, they just pop back up again. Keeping in mind that her arm is still injured. You think he's recharging his mana through all the kids he kills? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, wouldn't the first place that they would look for you be the opposite direction of the fight? Well, they might just start at the castle where they're hiding out at, but... That is also a good power to have, to just know, like, oh, right. Come on, Ryder. Let it be Ryder. Ryder will get his pants. Well, I mean, we'd see his chariot coming, I think. It's kind of funny that he thinks that she's a woman pretending to be a man when her backstory in this is, you know, is a woman pretending to be a man. Never mind. I think I thought it was a little bit more ironic than it really was. <laughs> Alright, the ranch is over. Murder time. Oh, Lancer? Yep, Lancer time. Oh, Lancer time. Oh, Lancer time. <笑>何者だ誰の許しを得てこの私の邪魔だとするかそれはこちらのセリフだけどセイバーの死球は我が槍の勇を私の命が私の命だ肉の一辺から血の一滴までその魂に至るまで私を守るだ何をした別に俺
Good trap. Okay. He's like, uh, Gara from Naruto. Yeah, he, he's got that uh, with angle to himself now. Liquid metal instead of sand. Oh, I love the perfect circle of the two. <laughs> Unfortunately, your gun is not going to be effective in this case. <laughs> I don't know, I think I would choose to be annoying at this point. Yeah. Every I would shoot at him and then stop. Wait for him to lower the defense. Start shooting again. Every time he goes to say something. But hey, he does have uh reality I mean, you could have died right there. You just dropped without knowing what was under you. <laughs> He's so great of a mage, he doesn't have to care about falling before. I'm just saying, if he had left a bomb, because he went down here too. If he had left a bomb down here, he would have just died. There we go, get our Simpo Cure moments dropped directly on top of the mine. <laughs> Or a claymore or anything. You know he's trapped the building. Why would you take the risk? Setting up the trap, very good. Let's get some JoJo moment in here. How long can you stop your heart? Heinous! <laughs> yeah, what did that gain you? Good question. Magic bullet. He's about oh. that outlaw star, this son of a bitch. <laughs> You're absolutely right. No, that's good. He's he's tricked him into thinking that he has nothing but ordinary bullets and a couple magical tricks. He's gonna pull out the magical bullet and be like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, block it. <laughs> See what happens. I mean, I think he already had him when he dropped through to the second floor, the first floor. It's mm -hmm. like, why would the guy who's been laying traps all over the place not lay a trap in the floor beneath where they're laying? I I guess because he didn't plan for that. He just tried to get away at that moment. Oh, are you saying he's not the guy who plans for everything? Hey, you can have good plans and then not be prepared for something you didn't expect. I mean, dude's already planned what to do when his wife dies. <laughs> he's one step ahead of everything, including death. But no, this is a this is a really fun episode. We got lots of good drama out of everything. I think. Yeah, the, I mean, it was. A, I think it's a better setup than the last episode was. Because mm -hmm. last episode I, I was it's giving me a bunch of stuff that I couldn't like figure out. <laughs> it's like uh, now <laughs> I just feel dumb. Right, right. But here, like the iceberg love story is like pretty easy to follow. We like understand what's happening here, and it's definitely um. Uh, he drops his mask for at least a moment to, like, express how he actually feels about all this, like, where he clearly does not want to be a part nope. of it anymore. Okay. So more of, uh, our terrorist friend. Yeah, yeah. Hey, have a whole have a whole episode called Mage Killer for the guy who's about to kill a mage. Which means alright, so they're having their duel inside. Our mage killer is gonna go ahead and kill the teacher. When he dies, Lancer gets freed and or disappears, and then so too uh does uh uh Saber heal up then. 
That's the assumption that they've made. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm feeling it going in that direction. They they've laid everything out in that way. I just have to see if it goes through. Uh Ryder hasn't shown up, but of course Ryder loves to just pop in in the middle of things. So if he just comes in and crushes Caster at the last moment, it'll be worth a lot. Saying if Ryder was going to show up, I think we'd see his chariot a long ways off. Yeah, yeah, we we might have had like some sign of it happening, but I guess we're focusing in on the action and not just all the externalities of it. Um, I actually thought maybe more of them would show up to the fight, but I guess they're just kind of up to other things. Let's see what. Well, the we other have ones here. are like plotting, right? So, yeah. Well, I mean, um, Tokiyami with Archer is expecting to get it so like he has to pop up at the last minute to try to steal the kill and get the command spell that's what he wants uh kirei and the assassins are just not here at the moment they're probably just vibing and watching that, i mean that's they're fine. also not really combat focused yeah uh meanwhile uh berserker and karya are just not here i i do not have a concept of what they could possibly be up to until we see them on I mean, we don't even again. know if they're there or not they they could be doing anything. Well, I mean, you remember at the docks, he was, like, somewhere unseen. To even the, even the uh, like assassin crew didn't know he was there. And he just yeah, summons yeah. Berserker out of nowhere. So, there's no telling if he's there or not. Right, right. We'll just have to see if we get a surprise next time, and if we get, like, a seven-way brawl suddenly. Also, conceivably, we haven't seen this guy in the area. Oh, yeah, Ryunosuke has to be, like, hanging around somewhere, but I guess... I mean, as the killer, he could have expected these guys to run off a different direction, and that's the conversation that's being had in our next time on. Ah, uh, He goes hmm. to kill them. It's possible. I guess, given that between the two, Caster is the one who's kind of in charge of that crew, would Caster set something up having Ryunosuke actually go do something, or would he keep him away in a protective spot and maybe, like, he's doing more child sacrifices for mana or something? I don't think he's doing anything. I don't think Caster told him to do anything. I think Caster's out there, like, I'm gonna go do this. And he's like, cool, I'll kill the humans. You know? Ryunosuke's taking a nap then, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm saying he's probably gonna kill the humans. Okay, okay. So, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. That'll definitely be very funny. The serial murder appears out of nowhere. It's like, yes, I'm going to kill a mage. And then he just gets dunked on or something. <laughs> well, no, he's going to go after these two. That's why I just said, Griff. I'm indicating, right, right. I'm pointing out on the thing. You can see my cursor, right? Right. Elisabeth Eisenburn is a mage. She has spells. She's a homunculus. She, she's already got advantages. She's on only people. shown to be cast to, like, healing. We've never seen her do much else. Right, right. Uh, and Maya is, of course, a trained assassin. Uh, but she is human. You are right. Maybe things could go south for her here. In that, they in also a... don't fucking know this guy. You've seen, <laughs> the, you've seen the movie Predators, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where one That's of true. them is literally a doctor who mm -hmm. preys on his patients because nobody fucking sees him coming because he looks fucking innocent. This is just right, some right. teenage kid. Teenage kid lost in the woods. Are, are they going to figure out he's a threat or not? I don't think I there's any be been few. one moment in the entire show where they've had a um, a familiar connect these two together. Mm -hmm. They just know Caster is about. I don't think they know who summoned him. Right, right. I think he ends up being a mystery to everyone right now, really. So I say on that... Let's go ahead and see what happens next time. For right now, we're going to go ahead and wrap up for the day. This has been So Face Reactions, everybody. I'm Griffin. That's Theta. And we'll catch you next time. See you around. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stone Face Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?